Hare Krishna. After the Kashmir Files movie depicted the violence against Hinduism, there has been a strong reaction by some leftist scholars who are trying to mal- malign Hinduism. So one such leftist scholar made a video saying that actually because of the discriminatory caste system, Hinduism is the most disc- most violent religion in the whole world. So let's uh, look at this from four different perspectives. First of all, the caste system is terrible. There's no denying it. It has led to a lot of inhumane discrimination. And it the way it exists right now is reprehensible. So no one is defending the caste system. Having said that, let's look at Three, three facts and one conclusion. First is that if it were really the most violent religion, then who was it targeting? The idea is that Hinduism was targeting the lower castes. Then shouldn't the lower castes have just been annihilated? The, what did the most violent religions do? If you consider the Abrahamic religions, say whether it is Christianity or, Jude or Islam, if we see when Catholicism went to South America during the colonial times, uh, times of colonization in the modern and pre-modern, pre-modern times. So entire South American civilizations were wiped out. The Aztec, the Maya, the Inca civilization, they just don't exist at all. Then if you consider the Protestants from Europe went to North America, And the Native Americans, they were actually, the whole planet was theirs. And now they are less than a tiny minority. So as compared to that, the targets of this so-called most violent religion, what what has happened to them? They're still existing and existing in large numbers. There's no pogrom to annihilate them. So... We consider for that matter also the the place where Islam originated, the Mesopotamian civilization, others, they're all Assyrian civilized, they're all gone. But the low, the people from the lower caste who are to be discriminated against, they're still there. They say, oh yeah, this, this violence is subtle. It is it didn't kill people, it just destroyed their spirits, it demoralized them. Okay, that may be so, but then we are changing the definition of violence over here. It's not destroying people. So it's destroying their spirits. Now that is a subjective assessment in terms of his destroying spirits worse than destroying uh, people's physical bodies. Would a person be, if a person kills someone, they would be hanged or severely penalized by the court. If somebody destroys somebody's spirits, demoralizes them. That's not a legally culpable crime. So just to suit an agenda, we are changing the definition of violence. But even accepting that, second point to consider is that the Hinduism is, was spread across India and it was never a very centrally organized religion. There's a lot of diffusion. So if the lower caste people felt so much discriminated against, if their morale was being repeatedly uh, damaged and destroyed within the Hindu system, they could have left. They could have gone to other religions. And yes, to some extent, it happened that some of them went to Buddhism, to Jainism, when those religions came. But what happened after that? Islam, to a large extent, had to convert by force. Christianity had to convert by allurements. The leftists, which had to which promise equality, you know, how much adherence have leftists been able to get in India? So if things where if Hinduism was such a terrible religion, then people could just leave. People could just leave, isn't it? They could just, why why do they have to stay and take the abuse in that system? So we are often looking at the past from our present prism. And we claim that we have the highest moral sense. And oh, people in the past were so persecuted and people who were in power were persecuting them and they were such brutal people. Well, egalitarianism in terms of equality, the way we understand it, that was not a value in any part of the world the way we understand it today. 
there was hierarchy in the west in europe it was there from where we say democracy came up there also we could there the aristocracy was there the clergy was there and then the serfs they were living poorly they were living quite poor and the same as compared to the mandarins and the ordinary peasants in china or in russia also so you know why target the discrimination in hinduism alone i mean say no 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 those were socio economic things this was a religious thing and that's why okay even if that were the case still the point remains that is it really religious well, there are two things over here if it were really a religious uh, religious discrimination then why does the caste hierarchy remain even among people who convert you know people who convert from lower castes in hinduism in hinduism to islam or christianity the hierarchical mentality still remains so uh, why is that it's is it due to hinduism then is it just a human mentality to find somebody some some reason to discriminate and people find that they say no other religions teach equality well even they may teach that but they don't really act that way you know, say for example people from particular areas they consider themselves to be superior so for example muslims in the middle east as mecca and then they consider them superior to others in india and even pakistan and you are converted afterwards so it's just a it's just a different mentality it's a human mentality which you'll find expression in different ways so and if we consider hinduism itself that caste system as it exists today is a deviation so with if somebody says that oh if there is uh, extremism in the name of islam oh islam is not bad there are just extremists who are misusing that so it's we'll islam is a religion of peace but there are some there's a extremist fringe who are violent well okay if we are ready to give that uh, benefit of the doubt we are having to have ready to have that nuanced approach in looking at islam then why not at hinduism if we let the core hindu text speak for themselves they don't support the caste system the way it is today krishna says in the bhagavata chatur varnam maya srishtam guna karma vibhagasha so it was by birth it was never by birth it was by uh, quality so it is a it is a division of originally what was intended varnashram was a division of a division of labor for individual compatibility and social opt optimal productivity and that became distorted over time so why not recognize that this is a deviation and okay rather than saying hinduism is the most violent religion yes this particular distortion within hinduism is is cause a lot of distress and it has caused disaster and why not give credit to the hindu text that it is a distortion of their teachings it is not their core teaching just labeling hinduism as a violent religion and the most violent religion at that that simply shows one's bias and nothing more than that and beyond that not only is there a difference between the core hindu texts and uh, uh, these the the caste system as it exists today it is based on those core texts of hinduism itself that within hinduism reform traditions have emerged and the bhakti tradition is probably the most uh, well known and widespread example of a reform tradition which enfranchised and empowered people from the lower castes they provided them a pathway to social and even spiritual respectability many of the greatest saints in the medieval period and even the modern period they were from lower castes and it is not because of the criticism of the leftists or because of the criticism of the christians that the caste that the caste system and its discrimination is decreased it is because of various reform movements within the hindu tradition pioneered by hindu teachers itself so why not give credit to the fact that yes every religion uh, that every just as every religion sometimes gets accretions which are distortions so same thing happened with hinduism and just as there is regeneration in every religion that was there in the hinduism also so this black blanket demonization of hinduism as the most violent religion is unfair uh, at the very least and the last reason is that this very statement that hinduism is the most violent religion is the strongest refutation of that uh, that statement how because if it were truly the most violent religion 
would it allow anyone to make such a statement there are uh, if there are truly violent religions they won't tolerate their criticism they will they will destroy those who criticize and they will create such fear that others won't dare to criticize the very fact that this uh, particular scholar in double quotes can make such a statement and not face any violence personally can survive indicate that the statement is false so this is just provocation for provocative statements meant to sensationalize and to agitate actually scholarly work is serious work it's satvik work it it gets results come slowly but those who don't want who want quick fame they avoid the slow path of rigorous intellectual work to understand a subject in its nuances from multiple perspectives and they just sensationalize so sensationalizing is is the cheap shortcut to fame for scholars who want to avoid hard work and these kind of statements they they are neither true nor beneficial to anyone so so the key point is that within the hindu tradition there has been a welcoming attitude towards people refugees and people from various traditions atithi deva bahu they have been welcomed and they have been accommodated and they have been facilitated it is and lower caste people also as the reform movements within are working see low caste differences are also being refused so appreciate the change that is happening nobody is saying that uh, any any part any religion is perfect there is room for reform krishna himself in the bhagavad gita says every endeavor is covered by fault so we need to work to improve so yes but demonizing like this only exposes one's own not just agenda but also exposes the folly and falsity of the statement by the very statement itself thank you hare krishna